comfortable and pull up a drink. We've got 50 minutes of learning to do. So I'm late to the game on this model kit. This actually came out four years ago and I totally missed out. I was very fortunate to find this on eBay for $48 and it's trending for about $150 or more plus the shipping. So I was very fortunate to find it when I did and I snapped it up. And I'm so glad that I picked this up because this is just a whole other level of skill and it uh, it really pushes you to be that much more creative. Now, if you just want to build it like it's in the box and have no other work to do on it, then fine, it, it'll still look really nice. But for me, it was not enough. I had to go further. And I have seen some other videos regarding this particular model. This is the instruction guide, incredibly detailed very very nicely done and so glad they included this because it really makes for a great reference to get things done now if you just follow the model itself in the pages you can put it together within a few hours or actually within a, within a day itself but if you want to actually make that much more of it there's a painting guide that gives you the actual colors you'll need so that you can use to paint it and customize it it comes with decals for certain areas to imply there's lights there. Uh, that was not enough for me. No decals for me. I gotta have actual lights. The nice thing about these model kits is that they are precision. There's no glue needed for these. This is so nice. Check out the parts. Loads and loads of parts on these runners. And the nice thing is that it's all molded in color. If you want to build it that way, that's fine. But if you actually paint something, even though it's molded in color, you can give it more dimension, you can give it more uh, volume by actually creating the shading that it needs. And you'll see that along the video. The end result is so much nicer than the actual prototype that's on the photograph on the box. I'm keeping the box because it's a cool looking box and as we all know, a lot of the products nowadays are going to be disappearing to just that illustrations on boxes. So I'm going to start with Vegeta first because it's obviously the easiest part of the kit. And if you want to keep Vegeta the way he is in just the solid colors, you can do so. He still looks pretty cool. But if, again, if you paint it, you can give it more volume, more dimension. Now, the kit itself comes with a figure that is non-posable. So if you actually want to pose the figure, you're going to have to scoop one up that is actually a 6 inch figure that fits inside the pod. Now this video opens up with the paint that I will be using because that's the question that comes up continuously. What paint do I use or what should I use? Well, I've been using the Vallejo Premium Paints because they're simply that much nicer and I really like the way the color applies and they're pretty much a permanent paint. Now, I only have the basic kit, so any other color I need, I have to mix using these five colors. So my paints do not have names. It's just blue, black, red, yellow, and white. And those are colors I use. You can name it whatever you want once you mix something so you remember it. Personally, I do not. And I couldn't give you the recipe because every time I paint, it's a whole different tone of blue, whole different tone of gray, etc. Now I have primered all of the pieces that I have 
get a Tamiya Gray. And the reason I did that is one, to use up my primer, and the other is for the paint to take well on the light colored areas, especially the white armor that's on his body and any of the yellows. Now you'll notice that I'm using the airbrush to apply this bluish gray tone as a shading. This will be like a base coat for the main color that's going to go on top, whether it's going to be white or yellow or blue, etc. It's going to be important to have my shading first. So in essence, we're actually painting in reverse, creating the shading and then applying the main color on top to tone down the shading and to make it look like it's more of a realistic or a natural application of shade on that color. It'll look like you've used three or four different tones to create that one basic piece. As you can tell, I ran out of Tamiya primer. Not a problem, it'll still work. Now as you can tell, I am not being exact where my shading is going. I'm only being approximate. That's the nice thing about applying the shading in this way. Because the highlights will then tone it down and you'll be able to direct the eye to the highlights by controlling those in the amount of density that you need. And this is what's really nice about painting in reverse. For the yellow pads that are on his body, I did switch the base color. I went with a gold brown to create the shading along the edges and then faded it into the rest of the piece. I then came back with a yellow to add my highlights and I finally covered the whole thing in a transparent Tamiya X24. You'll see that at the very end of the clip and it really looks so much nicer. The nice thing about the Tamiya, it's a high gloss, so it gives it a whole different texture and a contrast in the materials, how they look on the actual figure. You'll see that in just a moment.
So we made it to the interior of the pod. And this is the outer edge of the pod. Well, the interior of the outer edge. And we're gonna cut out those areas for lights. And we're gonna cut out one pinhole right here to install a fiber optic for that particular light. Now, all of the lights that I'm using in this actual model kit are from evandesigns.com. So if you need to look something up for your project, that's where you're gonna go to. And I'll leave that in the description below and a list of all the items that I use plus a description of the paint in case you have any question. Now we're going to do the shading on the interior. It's going to be the same process as we did on the actual figure, Vegeta. But now we'll be doing that to every single one of the areas, in this case, the what would be hard lines. And yes, you could do this with a marker or with a um, Gundam outliner, etc. But I'm just going to use the airbrush for one main reason. That overspray creates a softer tone at the edge so that I don't have hard edges and then as I camp back over it with the main color which in this case will be white you'll see that it has a really really nice transition now of course for this to work properly you need to make sure that you thin down your material enough make sure that the tip of your brush is clean so that you have nice clean lines and if in any case you start to see clumping or spattering, you're going to have to make sure that it's clean. But it's also forgiving because you are going to come back over it in a white and tone down any areas that seem too dark. And if you still need to go back in and apply darker tones, then you can come back with a marker or a brush and apply those areas you need to stand out. Make sure you do the same for both sides so that they both match. That way you have a continuity on your project. And of course, do any cutting out before you do any painting. Because the more you handle a painted piece, the more the oils on your fingers, on your hands, will destroy the paint job, even if you use a sealer. If the hands have oils and they just destroy anything if it's handled continuously. So yes, sealing it will protect it. But again, if you handle things continuously, you will wear them out. Once all the shading is finished, now I come back in with the white. Now take a look at how the white tones down this black paint, turns it to softer grays, stays dark in the crevices, and it looks really, really good. It looks like I did an extra difficult technique to do so, but really it's just overspray. It really works very well for shading, painting in reverse this way.
So this is what our outer edge of the inside of the pod now looks like, fully painted. It looks really cool. Now I've already made the cutouts as you saw that earlier, but now I want to fill them in with a green acetate or a green gel. And I glued that in and then I am going to pour or actually gently place UV resin over the green to lock it in and create a lens. And it's going to have a lens that's actually going to be concave and it's going to look really, really dynamic. So much better than using the sticker. You'll see that in just a moment. Observe closely that I'm using clear UV resin to create this lens in this slot. Why am I not using a colored UV resin? Because if I make a mistake and put it on the edge for any reason, any mistake, that green will tint the white and it will be incredibly difficult to clean it. So if it's clear, I don't have to worry too much about it, but if it's stained, Either I have to repaint it, it's going to create more work, and it's just more headache. That's why I put a green acetate on the inside to have the color there. Now as you saw earlier, I painted also in black the area where the light is going to be. And that is to cut off any bleeding coming through the white. I don't want to see that. I only want to see it coming through the lens. You'll see how nice it looks in just a moment. So here's the finished installation of eight Z LEDs and they're held in by UV resin. And as you can tell, they're pulsing. They look really, really cool. And that hot spot that's there at the bottom center, that's the fiber optic tube or strand that I put in there. And I glued an LED to that, also a Z light, and it shows up really nice. So Vegeta was actually fairly simple. The only thing that was complicated was putting together that little headset that has that visor that lights up. And that was also a Z-Light. Very, very tiny. It's like the head of a pen with a wire that's the thickness of a hair. Incredibly difficult to apply in there, but it looks so cool. These are the two mega lights or mega LEDs that go on the wall behind Vegeta. These light up the entire interior of the pod. You do have to black out for any bleeding and you do have to remove the post to actually glue in with UV resin the mega light. 
Now the dome on the inside, I should say the reflector or lens that's on that light is also with UV and that's also created in layers. And you just have to use one layer and then build upon top of that until it creates a small dome. And yes, it's a colored yellow UV resin. This is the actual seat finalized. And as you can tell, the shading really gives it a whole different dimension. And I did spray this down with the Mr. Super Clear to give it a flat look. And as you can tell, this is the finished color. This is the factory color. Quite a difference. So we've made it to the interior control panels. These are actually fairly simple because these green lenses come with the kit. So that's actually very simple. There's nothing to color here. But that kit that I'm installing on the inside is a welding effect kit that I actually split the bulbs. It comes with three. I put two in one and one in the other side. So it's got two whites and one blue. And I just split them. It, it's so nice to have it that way. That way I can just apply it where I need it without having to wire anything in. Now this is the actual console that's on the door. This is where it gets tricky because you do have to mark out the holes that you need to cut out because the actual panel, there's actually two panels, a magenta panel and a green panel and they overlay on each other and the holes that are here actually have perforations into the magenta that lies on top. It actually lines underneath, I'm sorry. And actually that will allow us to put in some LEDs. So I'm gonna drill some holes after I pencil them out and then I'll show you what that looks like. Now that we've drilled out the area for the actual LEDs, we need to drill out the area for the screen. Now you could just drill out the entire area here, but then you're going to lose the two pegs that hold this panel in and you want to keep those. So that sits right between those two pegs. So we're only going to cut out what we need. So by using the green overlay as a template, Using a pencil just to draw it in, we are only going to cut out what we need just for the screen. And then we will put a backing of a translucent plastic that will allow us to have the light underneath without overpowering the rest of the control panel. Now when cutting out an area like this, I find that it's easiest to use a small Dremel bit and make a waffle out of that area and that way it comes out in one big chunk instead of just making a random mess going zigzags all over that area see how easy that came out very simple you now just clean it up with a file or a knife and you're set to go make it square or the shape that you're looking for in this case it's kind of a offset rectangle Now we're going to repeat the shading process on the actual door itself or the window compartment. And as I was doing the shading on this particular piece, I noticed that there were two other areas that required stickers. 
And I did apply them, and you know what? I didn't like it. So, uh, yes, I ended up cutting out those slots to put in some more lights. That meant four more lights. So I had to wait on my order to come in because I didn't have those. Now, as you see here, because I am painting it the same uh, technique, it's going to be an exact color match to the rest of the pod. So that's the nice thing about painting everything the same day or using the same technique because you want everything to match. Now this is the back panel where the chair and those main lights go on to. This is where Vegeta sits against the wall. But in painting this, and I didn't realize it until after I installed the lights, that, that the mega lights or mega LEDs are really, really bright. So I recommend that if you are going to do this, paint the inside black. Black it out ahead of time. I ended up doing this later after I realized that I had not done it. So I had to take it apart entirely to do so. Fortunately, I was able to just black out what I needed and not take apart the entire wall on the interior, or I should say left and right side. So if you have the opportunity to do this, this is the time to do it. Paint the inside black as you are also doing the shading on the exterior. Now the piece that you see here, this is the cap that goes underneath the control panel on the window compartment. And yes, because there are so many lights in there, you'll see in just a moment, you will have to black out the bottom of this as well too. Um, when I mean the bottom, I mean the interior, not the white area that's curved on the exterior. 
you want to do your shading just like you have on the rest of the piece. And this is also part of the pod. This is one of the sides. You do want to black out this as well too because those green lights can bleed through there as well. So anywhere you have lights, and if you're planning to use lights, you do need to add an extra layer of paint to black out the bleeding of those lights, especially if they're going to be in color. You want the color to be concentrated only in the area that it's supposed to show, not through the walls of the actual model kit. This is the very bottom of the kit, and obviously this is gonna be on the base, so you're not gonna see anything coming through here. But that small square peg that you see there, that's where you need to have your wires come through. And as you can tell here, I am going ahead and blacking out anything that's possible when I am gonna have lights in there. So just a reminder, do this beforehand. So let's get back to the control panel because now that it's painted, we can actually add the lights to it. And I added chase lights. I added them out of sequence so that they can blink randomly. The chase lights or the blinking lights you see on the right, that's a whole different kit. It's a fire kit. Well, it simulates fire. But I split the three bulbs into three different locations. And here you do see the decals I spoke about. Again, I didn't like the decals for lights on the actual window area. I did cut those out and I'll show you in a moment what it looks like. But anytime you do something like this, you want to make sure all of your lighting is working. So you run a light test. Make sure that everything is working before you put it together. That way you know if there's any wires that are kinked or any wires that have become disconnected, etc. Work out those problems before you put everything together. So as mentioned earlier, those two mega lights, I ended up having to pull away from that wall and black it out. I used the actual double-sided foam tape because it was much easier than taking everything apart and painting it. So just taking out this one particular piece, putting the foam on the side of it, actually on the back side of it, and then applying a piece of black styrene. Now, if you're gonna do this, you have to remember that there's a peg on that wall and it will push up against this. So it's gonna be up to you if you want to do this method. You may have to remove that peg on the back because it's really not gonna be of any benefit or just remove the amount of that peg that is gonna bump up against this particular uh, material. 
if you don't remove it, then it's going to push this panel slightly forward and it's not going to sit flush. But that's all up to you. Now you can see how much of the light I've blocked out. Take a look. No more bleeding. This is what we want. The other really wasn't going to be attractive. Now once you've attached your lighting and you've attached your wires with the quick connect end, you'll need to find a path for those wires to lead them to the area where they're all going to meet so you can actually lead them into the base. The entire wall, as you can tell, is more of a honeycomb. Best thing to do is take a Dremel and just cut a slot into each one of those walls where you want to lead your wires. You obviously want to avoid the pegs, so you want to stay away from those and only cut the areas that may cause a problem with the tension or kinking the wires or bending the wires. So I used two pieces of fiber optic to create the small dome lights that are on the walls and I just glued the actual LED to that so I don't have to have a long piece of that fiber optic strand. And as you saw where I was pointing with the pencil, I did have to create some supports to be able to glue down those green LEDs. If you glue the LED to the lens, you'll see a hot spot. Pulling it away creates a better coverage. So as mentioned earlier, I decided to cut out the ports for those lights on the actual door frame or the window frame, but I created a problem in doing so. Because the actual dome that has that magenta window does not cover that area, you can actually look on the inside, I was definitely going to have some significant bleeding. Now the technique that I'm using here, I made a mask to I say create a gasket to fit on the inside. Well, that didn't work. It's a piece of styrene, but it's still too stiff. You can't bend it as easy. So I decided to make this styrene a template. And then I remembered that I have some leftover uh, stretch pleather. And I decided to use that to create a gasket as you see here, or I should say a black curtain. I glued it to the inside of that ring and I let it dry so I could uh, actually work on it without having it to come off. But it wasn't enough. As you can tell, you can still see the inside. It's not gonna work. So I had to create something on the opposite side. So I created a small boot out of the same material. I took a one inch piece of pleather, folded, folded over one edge, glued it down, and then glued that down to the inside edge, creating a boot. And this is what it looks like. It totally covers the inside. So this is what that piece looks like before I installed it. One inch wide strip of pleather. And now, as you can saw, I did paint the inside black because I don't want any bleeding coming through. I left areas for the pegs to match up. As you can see here, I painted the inside black. This is the boot on the inside. And it's also glued down. I had to wait four hours to finally have that dry down. But now when that piece of plexiglass goes in, or that acrylic magenta glass, now you will not see the interworkings of that compartment. It's gonna to be totally blacked out. Let me show you what that looks like.
Here's the light test using four mega LEDs on the door itself. There's two blue and there's two orange. And we now have the one pulsing light inside the control panel. And that's for the screen. I had to darken down the lights for you to be able to see it. Now, let me show you what the inside of this looks like, or I should say the opposite side. And I have all the wires running to one area. I had to cut slots for the wires to come through. As you can tell, I made a support for those LEDs to shine through because I didn't want them directly on the lens that I made. Otherwise, it'll be a hot spot. I want the light to be evenly dispersed and not see the actual LED diode. Now, everything here will run through the control panel to the bottom into that slot that you see on the right, and that's the panel that sits on the actual stand. I added four magnets for a support, and it really doesn't have that much support because once you open it, those magnets aren't touching. It's only touching when the actual ball is closed or the space pod. Let me show you what that looks like finished up. Well, we are approaching the end of this video and I will now leave you with a look in an even light at all the details that went into this finished product. I am really happy the way this turned out. I am so impressed with how detailed this plastic model kit is and I'm glad that I found it for $48. I did not spend a lot of time on Vegeta because he's on the inside. You can't see him, but if you want something that's posable and you want to switch out that headpiece to your figure, you can certainly do so. Now, if you learned something today, and if you like this video, please give it a comment, give it a like, and of course, subscribe. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back to the channel. There's still more coming and more to share. Now, I did add a touch switch, actually I did two, and each one is linked to a different compartment on the pod. The first switch, lights up the interior the second switch lights up the console and this is so cool i really am very happy the way this turned out stickers just weren't going to do it it had to be actual lights once again i will leave a link in the description below for you to acquire any of the lighting kits used in this video and i unfortunately i do not have a link for the actual model kit this one is 
four years old and I was very fortunate to find it on eBay for $48. You're going to have to do your best on finding a kit like this. Now if you already have this kit, yes, you can still take it apart because it's not glued in and you can actually do all of these modifications to make it look like this or even better. So I will now leave you with a finished product look at the actual project in a whole different lighting pattern. And once again, thank you very much for coming back. We'll see you here next time.